From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American Original. For over two decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. GEICO, committed to providing service to its auto insurance customers for over 70 years. More information on auto insurance at GEICO.com or 1-800-947-AUTO, any time of the day or night. How does an investment manager stand the test of time? By taking a long view through all market cycles and keeping a close eye on risk. Franklin Templeton Investments, a solid approach to investing for over 60 years. Gain from our perspective. Issue one, Aaron Gobra. For when Irish eyes are smiling. My name is Barack Obama. Of the Money Gall Obamas. And I've come home to find the apostrophe that we lost somewhere along the way. President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama this week crossed the Atlantic to attend a G8 summit in Europe. The first stop was Dublin. Irish Prime Minister Enda Kenny greeted the President and the First Lady. President Obama and his entourage then traveled by motorcade the 87 miles to Moneygall to visit the home of a distant relative of five generations ago, Barack Obama's great great, great grandfather, whose name was Fulmouth Kearney. In Moneygall, Obama tried his own hand at Irish Blarney rhythms, coupled with three words of authentic Gaelic. Remember that whatever hardships the winter may bring, springtime's always just around the corner. And if they keep on arguing with you, just respond with a simple creed. It's Fader Ling. Yes, we can. Question. Were there compelling reasons for the state visit to the Irish people? Or was this mostly a campaign event, Pat? Uh, look, he, I think it was terrific. The Irish are the, some of the, one of the few people on this earth that really like Americans. He goes over there. He's got ancestors there. Jack Kennedy did it. Other presidents have gone over there, John. I think it's a terrific thing. Ireland's got some problems. As you know, it's one of the countries over there that's, that's got some real debt problems. I think it's terrific, and it's a good way to begin the trip. And I think it's a very crabbed question of you to ask that in such a negative way. <laughs> well, I'm Irish. And, you know. I've got a little of that in me, you too, John. That's what I was expecting. <laughs> right. oh, yeah, watching that footage, I was thinking uh, the real Irish uh, love this president a little more than the Irish Americans on this set. And I think there were three of you. <laughs> um, there are warm bonds between our country and, and Ireland. And I think it was a boost for the Irish. And, uh, and it's a boost for the president. And there are a lot of Irish Americans and it's important to have their uh, ethnicity celebrated. And it's kind of wonderful that Obama can go back and trace it. This is on his mother's side to find this uh, relative and to see uh, where he comes from, his roots. And so I think I don't have any complaints. Uh, Timothy Carney. Yes, he's my, he's my cousin, that name <laughs> Carney. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. He went to see his great, great, great grandfather. Uh, I mean, the place where he lived. Yeah, well, it's not. What's the, the connection not, between him and what's your name? My my name is Carney. In C A R N E Y. Yes, in Ireland it was spelled C H E A R N A. Anyway, they're they're from the same name, different part of Ireland though. Same and name. From the. From you the think they're related to the, his great 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 grandfather by by a similarity of uh, comparison? Probably yes, and, and I'm glad, like Pat, I'm glad he went to Ireland. I think conservatives have lots of good criticisms of Obama, but when he does these foreign trips, I, I sometimes think. Uh, his conservative Campaign. critics get get silly and start criticizing every little every little thing he does. So I, I'm with Pat. You're with Pat on that. Give yes. him a break. Yep. <laughs> you want to bill him for the, the, the oh, transit? I, I want. If it's a political stuff, I would, no, I, I would rather bill him for all the fundraisers he does. He does these things where he travels to L.A. Mm -hmm. and gives a little speech and then sits down with all these rich uh, Hollywood types. He bills it to the taxpayers because he gave a small speech on economic policy. This and relates. To, to this him. relates to, to 2012. You yes. Know? And doesn't hurt. And, and uh, he's, he's, he's trying to appeal to the eye. By the way, here's the U.S. ancestral breakdown. German, 50 million, 16.5 percent. Irish, 36 million, 11.9 percent. English, 28 million, 9 percent. 
American, 18 million, 5.9%. Italian, 17.5 million, 5.8%. Polish, 10 million, 3.3%. Are you are you surprised at any of that? You're a Chicago right? Absolutely. And uh, believe me, John, in Chicago on St. Patrick's Day, the whole town is Irish. <laughs> Even when we had a black mayor, he was Irish on St. Patrick's Day. And so am I, Bagash and Bagora. And I'm delighted to see <laughs> <laughs> President right. Obama uh, visiting Ireland. It doesn't hurt him a bit w with his base and also uh, nationwide. It's one of the most uh, politically, s historically politically you know, savvy groups right. in the country. You don't think he should tell the Democratic National Committee to pay for this transit of him in the motorcade from Dublin to uh, where he went. Oh, he, money gone. He can ask whatever he wants to. I think he deserves it. <laughs> but you know, so don't pull it as a campaign. It's, stop. So, it's so hard to divide uh, uh, the politics from being president because okay. it is, is one and the same. London calling. President Obama and the First Lady attended a Buckingham Palace state dinner in honor of the Obamas, hosted by the spry 85 year old Queen Elizabeth II. Mr. Obama met with UK Prime Minister David Cameron and delivered a speech to the UK Parliament. I've come here today to reaffirm one of the oldest, one of the strongest alliances the world has ever known. It's long been said that the United States and the United Kingdom share a special relationship. Thursday, Friday, France. President Obama attended the G8 summit with Stephen Harper, Canada, Nicolas Sarkozy, France, Angela Merkel, Germany, Silvio Berlusconi, Italy, Naoto Khan, Japan, Dmitry Medvedev, Russia, David Cameron, UK. We committed to working together uh, so that we can find uh, an approach and a configuration uh, that is consistent with the security needs. Question, what are the tensions between the United States and Great Britain to get today, Pat? Well, the, uh, the tension between the United States, well, Britain is on sort of an austerity program right now. Also, the British and the French want the United States to be a little more aggressive in Libya, which they've been very out front on, uh, quite frankly. In the, in the, but with the G8, he's got some problems with Poles. The Poles are concerned about the giving up the, uh, the anti-missile defense in, uh, with, the, with the Russians. So there are a lot of problems, but the real problems these folks got is, John, they got Greece, they got Ireland, they got, the, uh, they got Spain, these other countries that are real danger of going down, quite frankly. You got the IMF involved there, and you got the Americans got their own debt problems. I'll tell you, if you take a look at this, you take a look at the G8, you're looking at a Western world which is somewhat contracting and whose real power relative to the rest of the world, I think it's clearly diminishing. Yeah, but the question was about U.S.-U.K. relationship, and I think this was about putting the special back into the special relationship. And I think the footage of the president and David Cameron, the British prime minister, in their shirt sleeves playing ping pong with some 16-year-olds, and they got beat. Uh, but there, there seemed to be a, a warmth, and so and I think mm -hmm. they're both confronting similar economic problems. But mm -hmm. the president was able to persuade uh, uh, NATO to send some helicopters in to the Libyan uh, fight. And I think the president is, is it's kind of tough love. He's making, he's right. making the Europeans take on the burden of, of mm -hmm. Libya, even though they don't like it. And he got them to pony up $20 right. uh, billion. Dollars he's repairing some damage Tunisia from Egypt. that it was Churchill a good trip. statue thing and all the rest of it. The perception is that Obama, because his father is Kenyan and he's anti-colonial, he's got no use for the old British empire, and that he has a cool relationship with the Brits, and that's written about in the American press. And I'm sure this was in part an effort to heal that up. It does. Mostly, be able, well, mostly, yeah, written, father, him, mostly written by Dinesh D'Souza, right. which yeah, was also reprinted right. in that's the British yeah, press. Exactly. But the Tories make, make a bigger deal out of that than and anybody mm -hmm. else because of their historical memory. But right. I, I thought it was very significant that Sarkozy and uh, Obama got together on Friday to uh, escalate pressure on Gaddafi in, in Libya. That was a positive sign. This is the, uh, be the direction things are going. And, and I, think th I think the Libya thing is a cost of, of uh, I, I don't see how France and England didn't learn our lesson from Iraq and Afghanistan. I feel like the French may feel they got left out of Iraq and Afghanistan. It doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense. Obama's mm -hmm. sort of leading from behind here argument sometimes looks like he's just he's teaming up with these other guys who, wa who want to do their own Muslim world peacekeeping type stuff. The well, fact, uh, fact is they, they, they don't move in the Middle East without us li leading uh, down there. But, but and know, uh, our big problem well, is trying, it's trying not to be as deeply involved and committed. We've already got two wars to worry about. Exit question. 
Give me a grade on Obama's performance in Europe this week. A through F. I think he mean I think he gets an A plus in Ireland. I think he did an excellent job in An Britain. overall grade. I'll give him an A. An A. Uh, an easy A. Easy A. A B. A B. Why? I'm a tough grader. And I don't, and <laughs> I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see much of substance. And, you know, they, they all used to talk free trade when they'd go over to Europe. And now they're all so deeply mired in bailouts. Something bold needed to happen. He didn't. I mean. Well, what came out of the conference? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, what it's, bold are you yeah. looking for? I'm, I'm saying maybe we could all start <laughs> believing in the, in the free trade we used to talk about. Stop bailing out banks. Stop bailing out countries. And maybe stop intervening in, in places and, and like Libya. And, and maybe start celebrating that Chrysler paid back all of its government bailout. Yay. And that the bailouts are right. in this country. <laughs> when you see the President of the United States and was, his uh, C lovely is average. Personally. B is above average. I'm not, I'm not giving him a failing mark with the, here. With the Queen and the dinner and all of that. Aren't you proud of him? I guess he kind, her, of, he kind of messed up on the toast, but oh, I don't know. I mean, oh. the overall impression. <laughs> How do you think it goes over in the world? <laughs> uh, I think it goes over fairly well. But you still give him a B. B is, is what above do you average. G8s are notoriously non-eventful. This one was very eventful and significant. I thought he, he did very well. I, I definitely give him an A. On the substance of the meeting, do you think anything came out of it? Well, you know, uh, it's often hard to tell, but I think what we were talking about with, with Libya as well as uh, 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 NATO, These are side uh, th there was progress These made. are side benefits. Oh, well, they were, they were discussed right at the meeting, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct? Got, yeah. Got this was a matter of, of uh, uh, established um, agenda on the meeting. Right, but you know why we're in Libya? Frankly, it's Sarkozy started this thing because he's in trouble politically with his right, and he's trying to make himself a big, tough war. I give the presidential couple an A. Issue two, Polenti's in. We need a president who understands that our problems are deep and who has the courage to face them. President Obama doesn't. I do. I'm Tim Polenti, and I'm running for president of the United States. Tim Polenti made it official this week. Paulenti is the recently retired Republican eight-year governor of Minnesota. He wants to be next year's Republican candidate for president. Here's why. Well, president Obama won't even address the, the major spending and deficit problems in the country. He has no plan for reforming Social Security. He has no plan for reforming Medicare. He has no plan for reforming Medicaid to speak of. Paulenti has a major advantage in the Republican presidential primary race. Namely, where he's from, his heartland, Minnesota. Paulenti was born, raised in, and served as governor of the state of Minnesota. And Minnesota has produced towering figures in American politics, culture, and jurisprudence. Warren Berger, Sinclair Lewis, J. Paul Getty, Eugene McCarthy, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Walter Mondale, William and Charles Mayo, and Bob Dylan. Also, Minnesota is a border state of Iowa. Iowans know Minnesotans, and Minnesotans know Iowans. So, Paulenti's Minnesota background, particularly as governor, gives him an edge in the Iowa caucuses and Iowa's presidential primary. Together, these races add up to the kingmaker. The king then goes on to win more caucuses and more primaries, collectively fingering the party's favorite for the November 2012 presidential election. By the way, here's a mini bio of former Governor Tim Pawlenty, age 50, wife Mary, two teenage daughters, Anna and Mara, University of Minnesota, B.A. and Doctor of Laws, practicing attorney, 15 years, Minnesota State Legislature, House of Representatives, 10 years, Minnesota House Majority Leader, 4 years, State of Minnesota, Governor, 8 years, 2003 to 2011. Question, can Pawlenty win Iowa? Abs Tim Carney. Absolutely, and I'm very happy that he began by going to Iowa and attacking ethanol subsidies, especially because he used to favor them. That, that takes guts to go in and do that. His being from a border state is good. Of course, uh, Michelle Bachman entering could complicate it, but if, if the ethanol thing is a cue and he really is going to go and battle the special interests like Barack Obama pretends to do, I think he could really catch a lot of attention and he can win Iowa. Who's that yep. lady? Michelle Bachman. Michelle, Michelle Bachman. Bachman, the alpha female. She and <laughs> she's uh, she's too is from Minnesota and she could. But come she was in. born in Iowa. And she's she makes born a in big Water, deal out of Born that. in Waterloo, is that right? right? And she yeah. could tap into the evangelical right. base and the Tea Party base better than he. And can. what she, about these geo geographical problems that she has? You know where a geographical problems? Well, where where places are located. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, you mean knowing, you know, knowing where places are located? <laughs> <laughs> well, she if you want to give a quiz. Problems, what I think. 
She had historical problems. I think she said the founding fathers ended slavery. Yeah. It came a little yeah. bit later. Well, what about right. she? Let me. She well, did she locate something in Maine or New Hampshire that's not there? Uh, oh yeah, she. It was yeah. some wrong state. But let me yeah. say this: no, it yeah. in she's the real threat. Well, are, you, are, you, are you holding her on uh, downs for that? Uh, I, I think her her uh, sweep of historical knowledge in the history of the country is lacking, but uh, she is Sarah Palin with organizing skills, and if she gets in, she will be a factor, certainly in, in Iowa. She will give Polenti hard Which one But is she is not nominatable, I don't believe, yeah. and which so is, Polenti can still, he can go the distance, she can't. Which one is more the alpha female? You've heard of the alpha male? I the have. alpha female. Al is it more? Versus is it more? Who? Palin or who? Palin or, or Bachman? Or Bachman. Uh, Palin is the alpha because alpha. Uh, pa uh, Bachman John, let me uh, say this. defers to her. Bach Bachman, <laughs> I'll tell you what she can do. Bachman can, if she beats uh, Palenti in Iowa, she finishes him off, quite frankly. I no, do no. agree that Palenti can win the presidency of the United States if he can get the nomination. Oh, I think if he loses Iowa, unless he comes in very close mm -hmm. to number one, I think he's gone. I think the well. question, who has the best chance to win Iowa? You've got the lineup pretty much in your head. You I want to get you want to get that far ahead of the game? Uh, I would I would say uh, Bachman Romney, frankly. Really? Uh, Bachman or Romney? Yes. Not Polenti. No, not Polenti. Winning Iowa. Is that what you're Winning saying? Winning Iowa. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, th I think uh, Bachman or Polenti wins Iowa. I don't see Romney winning Iowa. He wins New Hampshire. I think this is going to be a contested uh, mm. nomination. I don't think uh, uh, Bachman finishes off Polenti in Iowa. Iowa is so discounted. They haven't picked a winner for some time. Polenti in Iowa. Polenti in Iowa. Yep. Really? I mean, more likely than anybody else. Really? Yeah. <laughs> One in three chances. That means they can all topple in line. Yeah. And then Romney wins New Hampshire. Sure. No, they're early. Iowa, Iowa controls. Bull, bull, Iowa bull, government is very no, popular in Iowa, but I s expect a possible surge by the Tea Party folks, uh, 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 of whom Bachman is a, is a clear favorite. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't have any competition there, her uh, opposition could be divided enough that she could get the. Uh, uh, she, yeah. she could win. The Iowa answer Congress. is Palenti. Issue three, District Twenty Six, New York. We had the issues on our side. Did we not have the right issues on our side? Kathy Hochul, a Democrat. I repeat, a Democrat. This week was declared the winner in a special election in New York's 26th Congressional District. She beat out Republican rival Jane Corwin 48% to 43%. The special election was held to fill the seat of former Republican Congressman Chris Lee, who resigned after shirtless pictures of him were leaked to the media. Hochul pulled off the upset in a traditionally Republican district, even though Republican Jane Corwin outspent Democrat Hochul $4 million to $2 million. Hochul ran political ads connecting her challenger, Jane Corwin, to the Republicans' plan to reform Medicare. And now she wants to cut Medicare. That Republican Medicare reform plan was crafted by the chairman of the House Budget Committee, Paul Ryan. Under the Ryan plan, Medicare pays for a portion of the premium for insurance that is sold by private insurance companies. Ryan calls it quote-unquote premium support. After the election, Ryan accused the Democrats of demagoguery. If you can scare seniors into thinking that their current benefits are being affected, that's going to have an effect. On Wednesday, the U.S. Senate, the Senate, voted down the Ryan plan 40 I votes the 57 nay votes, five Republican senators sided with the Democrats. Scott Brown, Massachusetts, Susan Collins, Maine, Lisa Murkowski, Alaska, Olympia Snow, Maine, and Senator Rand Paul, Kentucky. Uh, Tim Carney, what else happened in that race? I'm thinking about a man by the name of Jack Davis. Yeah, he was a, a Democrat who was running as sort of a, a pretend Tea Party candidate. What happened? He brought in 9%. He had been up higher. He brought in 9%. Oh, did he do that with a uh, purpose in mind? I, I mean, yeah. I this think is a was, convinced was, Democrat, right? It, 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 he was trying, yes. He was, and he ran as a Tea Party, and Tea Party is, uh, and they had to done a great that, extent, Republican. They had they done, yes, they had done that in other districts during the 2010 general election. Why did he do that? Election. It was a strategy they had tried in other districts. Well, that, it's that the first nine time percent. If he had not done that, but you know that. what? No, I don't think. This was, I think this even was a stratagem him, on the, on the part him. of delivering this Republican seat to the Democrat. But I don't think you can say every one of his votes would have gone to right. Corwin. Right. How I many think, would you say would have gone to him? <laughs> I don't know. I well, think it would have been. A, it would have been a fifty-one forty. The fact yeah. that what it was, was the plurality. Close. What was the plurality? The fact that the, the, four points. It was four points. Four points. 
Now, if he, he would even easily have delivered that with John, his nine. The fact yeah. that he's yeah. 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 pulled yeah, nine out of John, the race, he's John, a phony tea John, party, John, John. and he goes in. But John, the fact that playing it, playing it, the logic. Playing, <laughs> yes, I do, but playing math is not politics, John. The fact is that is a traditionally Republican district. This is a third so loss what? for New There's York Republicans. So why? what? That's There's what another defi- reason that's why what it, it went Democratic, and it has nothing to do with the merits of the candidate. It was a proxy race for 2012, and it basically is highlighted at the fact that the Medicare proposal the Republicans have on the table is creating Ella, political problems. Ella, that that the Democrats don't want it was a, clear setup a, a shrinking and premium John, support. And Davis think, set it up. Exit uh, question. Is the Republican defeat in New York's 26 a wake-up call for the Republicans who backed Paul Ryan's proposal to reform Medicare? Pat Buchanan. As Sarah Palin says, you betcha. Eleanor. <laughs> That's right on that one, and so is Sarah. Jim Carney. It's the same as Social Security five years ago, where Republicans put up a plan. Democrats don't have to put up an alternative, and they just attack demagogue, demagogue. It, they should have learned their lesson. Clarence. Especially because Republicans use the same strategy to try to block Obama's health care reform. Uh, definitely uh, Ryan's true. plan has lost momentum, and they've got to find some way to get it back. The answer is it doesn't prove anything about Ryan's acceptability or non-acceptability. It has to do with uh, Davis uh, inserting himself into the race with the idea of upsetting the up- outcome. Issue four, gas bloat. In many places, gas is now more than $4 a gallon, meaning that you could be paying more than $60 to fill up your tank. $3.83 per gallon, practically 4 bucks. That's what the average national price for a gallon of gas has bloated to this week. Last year, the price of gas per gallon was a dollar cheaper, $2.80 per gallon. Today, three out of four Americans say high gas prices are causing their families financial hardship. About 50% of all Americans say gas prices require them to make major changes in their lives, including cutting back on their annual vacations. Who's to blame? Who else? Barack Obama, they say. 61% of Americans believe that President Obama's policies are to be blamed for the nation's painful gas costs. To this, Mr. Obama says, hold on, relief is on the way. I believe that we should continue to expand oil production in America. We should increase safe and responsible oil production here at home. The president has issued executive orders to do just that. Item. Alaska National Petroleum Reserve sell drilling leases to drill for oil on the 23 million acre piece of land. Not be confused with ANWR, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Item, Gulf of Mexico and the Arctic Ocean. Mr. Obama wants to extend existing leases to conduct offshore drilling. Item, drill now. Give incentives to oil companies to drill more and drill faster. Item, Atlantic Coast, review the environmental dangers of speeding up shoreline drilling. But New Jersey Democratic Senator Bob Menendez says, in effect, much ado about nothing. The money saved is not worth the potential environmental risk. Quote, the Department of Energy has projected that drilling all our coasts, even the Jersey Shore, would only reduce gas prices by three cents in 2030. Unquote. Question, what about that, Senator? (laughs) <laughs> and his view that it's only going to yield very little. You agree well, with well, that? And this is probably right, but you know, Obama's going through the, uh, the the proper motions. The president must appear to be doing something, but he told the truth when he said there's really not much a president can do to directly affect gas prices, mm-hmm. uh, whether you're Republican or Democrat. But no president gains any points by telling people that mm-hmm. truth and without at least going through the motions of, you know, you know uh, drilling leases, et cetera, et cetera. Also, leases take a long time. What yeah, yeah. Bush accomplished in his administration of a few years ago, three or four years ago, are just mm-hmm. coming alive now. because. That's right. Less, less, uh, leasing over, the, over the long haul, you can affect it, but, but you know, know but the the problem, very time consuming. Here's quickly. what's the problem over the long haul is you got countries like China and India and others are booming and they're consuming more and more oil. And you take all the oil producing countries in the world, and any number of them have been flatlined, and some of them their production is declining. So you've got this enormous demand that's growing, John, and production that's declining. Ultimately, they're never going back to two dollars. Why a gallon is gas. the demand rising? so quickly, so highly, so significantly well, the, in China. Why? The, their economy is developing. And, meaning and, what? Meaning people are getting richer. And well, when, 
the way people get richer is... What's the other factor there? The way people get richer is by using energy. China subsidizes gasoline yes. costs. But the, the, with Obama, he, I mean, his being blamed for the, the oil prices is silly, except that he's pretended to be super president who gets to solve every problem. Really, he's got to get government out of the way and stop the regulations they on refining. They pay more for China for, ga for ga a gallon of gas than we pay here. We, we still have comparatively low prices. And this morning... China I, subsidizing well, the cost of gasoline. Do you I, understand? I know, but Our the, government does not subsidize the cost of gasoline. Yeah, but, yeah, but we ought to be taxing it. What the consumer it. pays we, is what drives the politics. Yeah. Yeah. And I, this morning on the radio, they were telling people to go over the Bay Bridge to the beaches to leave before 7 in the morning or 10 at night because there were going to be 12,000 more cars because gas prices have suddenly taken a dip and they're, and they're lower. So where does that fit into wow. your scary narrative? You've got the last word. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, quickly. <laughs> Buy now <laughs> before the prices Buy go up now. again. Before the prices go up again. <laughs> Buy the gas no, now. No, I, you mean fill up the tank now? Uh, I right. think uh, 389 is good. Pri prices yes. will come down. We just don't know when. That's the thing. Okay. I, I, I'm more optimistic. Gaddafi will be out of office by July 4th. Yes or no? You'll be gone. I agree. He'll be gone. No, he'll still be there. Why do you say <laughs> that? I, I think he will. I think he's hanging up. <laughs> oh, is that the reason? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say he'll still be there. He's like Castro. Uh, Clarence is right. He will still be there. Memorial Day was declared a national holiday 143 years ago to honor veterans of both the Union and Confederate forces. Today we salute the fallen military heroes over the course of our history for their dedication, their service, and their sacrifice. Bye-bye. Geico. Committed to providing service to its auto insurance customers for over 70 years. More information on auto insurance at geico.com or 1-800-947-AUTO any time of the day or night. Smart global investing requires expertise from the ground up. With insights from local experts across the world, we have a unique perspective on global investing. Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. If, for such a small word, it packs a wallop. If I live to 100, if Social Security isn't enough, if my heart gets broken, if she says yes. We believe if should never hold you back. If should be managed with a plan that builds on what you already have. Together, we can create a personal safety net, a launching pad for all those brilliant ifs in the middle of life. You can call on our expertise and get guarantees for the if in life. After all, we're MetLife.